Welcome. In the last lectures, we derived some expressions for tractive force and its components and performed some numericals. But I uh, got some uh, queries from uh, students. Let us discuss them further and then we'll come on to the today's topic. Query number one was asked by Ankit is kilometer per hour per second the new unit of acceleration? Uh, let me throw some light. We know that acceleration is defined as the ratio of velocity to time. In, in this particular unit, the velocity of a locomotive is generally mentioned in kilometer per hour and time uh, usually is mentioned in seconds in speed time curves. So the, so the ratio of these two units will become kilometer per hour per second. But if it would have been mentioned in meter per second, then the speed, uh, then the unit for this acceleration would have become meter per second square. This is the usual unit which you come across in your day to day life. But over here we are using kilometer per hour per second. This is not different from these two. Over here the time is mentioned only in seconds whereas the over here the time is mentioned in uh, hours and second. So we uh, generally convert this hour into seconds. You must have noticed that I have converted this hour into uh, seconds by dividing the expression with 3600. Okay. Let us go on to the second problem. This query was asked by Shubham. He said, while derivation, I come up with the solution, uh, I come up with the uh, expression that FW, the tractive force is equal to 277.8 WE alpha plus 98 WE G, the gradient plus WE R, where WE is the effective weight. While during solving the numericals, I use the expression 277.8 WE alpha plus 98 WG. Instead of using WE, I use W over here as well as here. Well, WE is equal to 1.1 times of W and this WE comes into the rule whenever the locomotive is accelerating. I should explain it more using some uh, using the speed time curve. It is the trapezoidal approximation of a speed time curve where this section shows the acceleration region this section shows the free running region in this approximation the authors have considered that the train is accelerating on in this region only during this duration and it is not experiencing any gradient effect or the resistance from air or mechanical resistance but during the free running period when the train is not accelerating it is generally experiencing the gradient effect plus the mechanical resistances That is, the effect of gradient and mechanical resistance is pronounced in this region and it is not pronounced in this region. Hence, during the calculation of uh, acceleration, we considered mass to be WE, whereas as the train is not accelerating in this region, we considered the mass to be W, the dead weight of the train, where this is the approximate expression. where all practical conditions have been considered. I guess I have sold your queries. You can ask any query on WhatsApp, on uh, personal messages, on the comments below the video. Okay, let us move ahead on today's topic. But before that, we should understand the mechanism of Mechanical energy transfer in a locomotive. 
This block diagram shows the power flow mechanism in a locomotive where the uh, electric motor draws electric power from the supply means and convert it into mechanical energy with some efficiency. Let us consider the efficiency of the motor is eta m and the power drawn from the supply is pe and after this uh, the motor converts this electrical power into mechanical power and say the power available at the output of the motor or at the input of the gear is pg with the efficiency eta m now gears will transfer this this pg power to this uh, axle or the wheel uh, and let us say the power available at the axle or at the wheel is pw and the gear does so with the efficiency of eta g where eta g is the gear efficiency eta m is the motor efficiency so now to calculate energy consumed consumed by locomotive per kilometer is possible if I have the information about the electrical power consumption by the motor and this can be uh, calculated only after having the information about the mechanical power output mechanical power output so in today's lecture we will first try to ex derive an expression for pw and then we will use it to derive an expression for pe and then we will try to uh, calculate the energy consumed by the electromotive uh, per kilometer this is typically termed as specific energy consumption specific energy consumption which is the topic for today specific energy consumption for electric locomotive so the content for today's lecture is power output at the wheel which is pw we will use this pw to calculate the energy available at the wheel then after calculating this energy we will try to derive the specific energy output and consumption and then we will try to find out the expression for the energy required to accelerate the locomotive energy required to overcome the slope energy required to overcome the force or resistive forces we have already drawn uh, the expression for uh, the forces required to overcome acceleration uh, overcome slope and overcome resistance which were f a f g and f Ah, we will be using their expressions to calculate the energy required. So, uh, power output from driving axle or wheel, we will try to derive the expression for this. We already know the power, mechanical power is equal to the force into speed, force into speed. And if you are trying to derive the expression for power at the axle, we should know what is the force acting at the axle and what is the speed at which the axle or the wheel is moving. We already have the expression for force which is Fw. Fw is the force acting on the axle or the wheel and say uh, the wheel is moving with a speed of Vm kilometer per hour. If Fw is mentioned in Newtons and speed is mentioned in meter per second meter per second then the unit for power would become newton meter per second and this is nothing but uh, nothing but the watts so the power will be in watts if the force is mentioned in newtons and speed is mentioned in meter per second but generally the speed is mentioned in kilometer per hour and the force is mentioned in Newtons. So let us convert this into watts. We have uh, we we will need to convert this kilometer into meters and hour into seconds. Newton kilometer per hour will be equal to Newton into meter by 
second where this kilometer will be converted into meters so i will multiply it with thousand and this hour will be multiply uh, converted into seconds so i will multiply it with 3600 seconds so after solving this i will get the expression of uh, ex uh, so uh, not the expression but, but the units in kilowatts or watts so the final expression that i can write for power at the wheels pw this will be fw times vm divided by 3600 in kilowatts or fw into vm into 1000 divided by 3600 in watts and if eta g is the transmission efficiency then eta g would be equal to power available at the wheels divided by power available at the gears this implies the expression for power available at the gears would be equal to pw divided by the gear efficiency and the expression for this power available at the gear would now be equal to fw times vm divided by 3600 into eta g and this will be mentioned in kilowatts if eta m is the motor efficiency that means eta m is equal to motor output that is p p pg divided by the motor input that is pe this implies pe would be equal to pg divided by eta m and this will further will be equal to substituting the expression for pg from this i will get fw into vm divided by 3600 into eta g into eta m so this is the required expression for the power consumed by the electric motor uh, in uh, to convert that electrical energy into mechanical energy we will try to solve a numerical based on this expression this numerical is particularly very important for university exams let us see this particular one a 200 ton motor coach uh, 200 ton motor coach driven by four electric motors where each motor is developing a torque of 800 newton meter we are provided with the torque produced by each motor and total number of motors are four let us list out what are the mentioned things here here the dead weight of the coach is given which is 200 ton also the torque produced by each motor is mentioned as 800 newton meter so the total torque will be t will be equal to 800 into 4 this will be 32000 newton meter torque this is the total torque which is being produced by the electric locomotive further if up gradient is 30 in 1000 we are provided with g also over here g is 30 in 1000 and to mention it in percentage we will multiply it with 100 i will get 3 also the gear ratio is given to us gear ratio if you remember we mentioned it with it with beta it is the gear ratio and it is equal to 3.5 with gear transmission efficiency that is eta g is mentioned to us and it is 90% 90% i can write it to be 0.9 and the wheel diameter is 90 cm that is capital d is mentioned to us it is 90 cm and in centimeters it will become 
zero point nine meter. That is dividing dividing it by hundred. Now the train resistance is also mentioned to us, which is which is fifty newton per meter. I should mark R to be equal to fifty newton per ton. Rotational inertia of ten percent. It means the train will be having a uh, effective weight of one point one percent, one point one times of dead weight. Now we need to calculate. That is, I should write W E also, which will be one point one percent of W, which is two hundred. So it will be two twenty ton. We need to calculate the time taken by the coach to attain a speed of 80 kilometers per hour. We are required to calculate the time to uh, uh, time taken by the coach to uh, attain a speed of 80 kilometers per hour. That is the speed of the wheel is mentioned to us. That is Vm is mentioned this time, and it is 80 kilometer per hour. Also, calculate the current run by. Each motor. We also have to calculate the current run by each motor. If the supply voltage is 3,000 volts and the efficiency of the motor is 85 percent. Over here, voltage is mentioned to us, so we will write V to be equal to 300, 3,000 volts, and eta m is equal to 85 percent. Uh, let us see what we are provided with, with and what we can calculate. These all these things are given to us. And uh, let us uh, write down the formulas that we have. We have these two expressions, out of which we know eta g, which is zero point nine. We know beta, which is three point five. We know t, the torque, which is thirty two thousand newton meter. We also know d. That means by substituting all these values, I can calculate F W, and this will come out to be. Two lakh twenty-four thousand newtons. After substituting these values, I will get F W to be equal to two lakh twenty-four thousand. Now, in this expression, now I have the value for F W, which is this. I have W E, which is two twenty. I do not have this alpha. That means I have this. I have this, but I do not have this. I have the value of this, which is two hundred. I have the value of G, which is three. I have W. I have R. R is fifty. So that means in this particular expression, I do not have the value of alpha. So I can calculate the value of alpha from this expression. After substitution, I will get alpha, that is acceleration, to be equal to two point five four kilometer per hour per second. Now from this alpha, I can calculate the time required by the train to achieve a speed of eighty kilometer per hour. That means I will divide this Vm divided with alpha to get the time where Vm is 80 km per hour and alpha is 2.54. I will get 31.49 seconds. So the locomotive will take almost 32 seconds to reach to a speed of 80 km per hour. Now the next part of the question says we need to calculate the current run by each motor also. If the supply voltage is mentioned to us, and the efficiency of motor is also mentioned to us, we already know the expression for the power consumed by the electric motor, which is P E, which will be equal to F W times V M, that is the speed of the motor divided by thirty six hundred into eta G into eta M. Eta m is mentioned to us, but eta g is not mentioned to us. So we will consider it to be one over here, and we have the value of F W. We have the value of V M. So we can calculate power consumed by the electric uh, motor, but this power is equal to V times I. That is power consumed by the uh, electric motor is V I. So uh, by substituting the values of F W V M and all this, I will come up with the uh, with the with the value of P E, and this will be, and it will come out to be fifty eight thousand five hundred sixty kilowatts. 
and from this expression I can calculate the current run by motor motor it will be voltage divided by power sorry power divided by voltage so it uh, it will be 58560 divided by 3000 volts because the voltage is given to us it is 3000 volts after solving it I will get 1954 amperes but this is the current run by 4 motors I need to further divide it by 4 to get the total current run by individual e uh, motor and this will be equal to 488 amperes